Hello. Hello, hello. How are you? Good, thanks. Good. So I'm going to switch um, the camera to the students so you can see them. And uh, please, please just begin. We're going to mute while you're talking and we'll have um, a chance for Q&A at the end. Is that okay? Yep, okay. that sounds good. And I will have, um, um, yeah, you guys have been talking as well. But, uh, but yeah, perfect. Um, are you ready for me to begin, Kim? Yes, please do. Maybe um, you can um, stop the screen sharing just for a sec so they see you. And then uh, what, maybe you can um, stop the, the share screen for a sec so the students can see you. You can say hello and then share again. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> okay, let's begin. Great. Good morning, everyone. Excellent. So, uh, what time is it in your area of the world? Oh, it's now uh, one fifteen p.m. Perfect. How how am I coming through sound voice? All good here. I'm I'm muting so um, you can. Uh, there, there are no disturbances when you talk. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I'll uh, I'll, I'll share my screen and begin. Perfect. Sounds good. Great. So um, I'm going to give it of Wikipedia and medicine. A little bit about myself. Um, I'm a small town emergency room physician. Uh, I live in uh, this uh, great big country called Canada, um, a very rocky part of it. Uh, that picture you see on the uh, right lower area there, that's about 20 kilometers from where I live. Um, I'm affiliated with the University of British Columbia. However, my university is about 800 kilometers from where I live. I became involved in Wikipedia about 10 years ago. Uh, I was working in my emergency department. My department was quiet. I was looking around the internet, and I came across this article that was really quite bad. And I thought, geez, this is not very good. Um, and then I noticed that there was an edit button. And I hit the edit button, and I realized that I could fix the internet. And um, I've been an active volunteer ever since. So uh, first question is, does the internet matter? Um, so here's some data to support that. This is where um, uh, people in the United States get their national and their international news. What we see in the left upper hand corner is uh, for the age group 18 to 30. And basically what we've seen is we've really seen a rise in the internet as a news source between 2001 and 2013. The primary source of news for everybody under the age of 50. If one looks specifically at healthcare, um, they've looked at Americans. The average uh, American visits a physician three times a year. If we estimate that the average physician visit is 20 minutes, the average person is spending an hour with a doctor. But they're spending 52 hours a year looking at healthcare information online. So if we want to have a maximal impact on people's health, we need to make sure that the internet is right. It's Wikipedia read by nearly everyone. And you, it's getting there. Here's some data to back that up. Um, uh, Wikipedia is the sixth most popular website in the world, the first four being Google, Facebook, YouTube, and Yahoo. Wikipedia gets about a half a billion visitors each month. These visitors look at about 16 billion uh, pages of content. About half the, the readership now is, is on mobile phones. If one looks at Hebrew, the Hebrew Wikipedia gets about 26 million um, page views a month, making it the sixth most popular Hebrew website. In Arabic, um, the Arabic Wikipedia gets about 47 million page views, making it the second website in Arabic after um, uh, uh, Arabic Google. One looks at the readership of Wikipedia's medical content. Wikipedia's medical content received about 7 billion page for uh, the 160,000 articles that existed at that point in time across 250 languages. People care a great deal about medical content. Uh, the proportion of, of 
they've used that for pain to medicine is about 3%. And then if you look at the medical paid views, about half of people looking at medical information are looking at English articles and the half of people looking at uh, medical content and are looking at when it comes to medicine, the next most popular language is after English or Spanish and German. Um, Arabic has about 550 medical articles. Hebrew has about uh, 2,700 medical articles. And there's been a number of surveys looking at different groups of individuals and how frequent Wikipedia uh, use is in these groups. It, there's been a number of surveys of physicians, both in the developed and in the developing world, which have found that somewhere between half and 100% of physicians are looking at medical information um, um, on Wikipedia. About 30 to se uh, 5 to 7% of pharmacists. Um, uh, about 94% of medical students are using Wikipedia in one study. It's frequently used by journalists and it's frequently used by policymakers. And we know this as we occasionally text them, copy and pasting from Wikipedia verbatim. Now, there's an interesting um, a study that looked in more detail back in 2013 regarding why 94% of medical students are using Wikipedia. And these were medical students at a top university who had access to um, some of the world's best medical resources. And they asked them, you know, why are you turning to Wikipedia rather than medical textbooks, rather than journal articles, rather than up to date? And the student's response was, Wikipedia is easy to use. Um, you know, I don't need to enter passwords multiple times. I don't need to jump through a whole bunch of hoops to see the content I want to access. And Wikipedia is understandable. You know, so much of the time with um, um, PubMed, with journal articles, one spends time looking for a topic only to discover that, you know, it's too specific, it's not what you want, or it's overly complicated. Uh, myself and a gentleman named Andrew West, who's a computer scientist, back in uh, 2014, we looked at the usage of Wikipedia's medical content versus the usage of the other big medical resources out there online. And based on the data we collected from a number of different sources, Wikipedia back in 2014, it looked like it was the single most used medical resource in the world. Number two was the NIH, um, uh, and number three was WebMD. Next question, does Wikipedia cover nearly everything? And it is definitely getting there. If one was to take the English Wikipedia and print it out um, in books the size of the Encyclopedia Britannica, it would take 2,400 volumes of the Encyclopedia Britannica just to print the English version of Wikipedia as of January 2017. This Wikipedia is the largest reference work on the internet. Um, there are more than 43 million articles across 284 languages, of which 53 million are in English. And if one was to print out the medical content as of 2013, you know, a slightly smaller portion of content, of course, it would take about 127 volumes of the Encyclopedia Britannica, so a great deal of material. Next question. Does Wikipedia have a huge number of editors? And this is more of an, uh, an interesting question. And the answer is sort of yes and sort of no. Um, well, as I'm sure uh, Shani has told you, anyone can edit Wikipedia, but not everyone does. There are about 80,000 people who make more than five edits each month to Wikipedia, about 12,000 people who make more than 100 edits each month. And these are all generally volunteers. They're all working for free, and they've sort of formed self-governing communities. Now, if we look at the number of editors working on medical content, this is a much smaller number. Um, in 2015, there was uh, 318 editors across 275 languages who made more than 250 edits to medical content in that year. Um, you know, this is a slight increase from 2013, but it's still a very small community. About half of these editors are working in English, and about half of these editors are working in other languages. In many languages, you know, there will only be one or sometimes no, you know, core contributors to medical content in that language. Contributors. Back in 2013, we, we surveyed our core community, asked them to give us a few details about their uh, background. About half of our core community are healthcare professionals. About half have a master's, PhD, or MD. An additional 33% have a, um, a bachelor's degree. 
80 percent uh, uh, identify themselves as male, 10 percent as female, and 10 percent would rather not say. So, you know, what we see is we see that, you know, this is a very educated group of individuals um, generally, but there's also, you know, a fair number of members of the, of the lay public, people who have specific interests in, in, in specific areas of medicine. And further research looked at why the core community of Wikipedia who work on medical content, why do they do this? Um, and the responses were four to, in four main groups. People edit Wikipedia as they find this is a useful way to learn the material themselves. Uh, people edit Wikipedia because they feel a responsibility to the wider world. You know, many of us realize that many people rely on this medical content, and therefore we want to make it as good as possible. Um, and finally, those who edit Wikipedia feel positively about Wikipedia, and you know they enjoy sitting there um, summarizing the, the best available medical resources um, in their own language. This is a question I often get from academics: Is Wikipedia reliable? And this too, the answer is sort of complicated. The answer is sort of yes and sort of no. Um, when it comes to reliability, it depends on how you define it and what you compare Wikipedia to. One thing I always emphasize to my students is that there is no perfect source. All sources can, can, you know, can potentially contain errors. You spend enough time reading textbooks, you spend enough time reading journal articles, and you will pick up errors. Um, there's an analysis uh, done in 20, 2005 um, that was published in Nature, another one done in 2012 that compared Wikipedia to the Encyclopedia Britannica. And in, at both those time periods, Wikipedia was found to be about as accurate as Britannica. Uh, additionally, Wikipedia has an internal peer review process uh, for articles to reach a good article and feature article status. So, you know, my main goal is I try to convince people to edit Wikipedia, not to just, not just to use Wikipedia. Here's another interesting look at the reliability of Wikipedia. This here, uh, there were some surveyors who basically went around the streets of London a couple of years back and they asked members of the, of the general public how much they trusted different sources. And one of the encouraging things from this is that even though the Sun and the Mirror sell millions of, uh, of copies, these are two famous British tabloids, they sell millions of copies every day, people don't actually believe what is written in these tabloids. And the other interesting thing is that people's um, um, trust in Wikipedia is equivalent to that of the BBC. Another look at the reliability of Wikipedia, these are a couple of studies that, that have been um, uh, recently published in the last year or two. Um, um, Wikipedia, uh, the first study basically students were given a quiz. They were then given access to either UpToDate, which is a, a famous medical online resource that costs about $500 a year, um, uh, an online medical textbook or Wikipedia. So they're given a quiz, um, uh, they fill out the quiz, they were then given access to one of these three resources, they were randomized to, to which of the resources they got. And then they were retested to see, um, you know, uh, and then the amount of students improved before access to after access was calculated and compared to each other. And Wikipedia either resulted in similar or better results. Um, so i.e. students were after the use of Wikipedia than either the two other sources. And you know, part of the reason this appears to be so is that it's easier to find what you're looking for on Wikipedia, and because of um, Wikipedia has better search and Wikipedia has better interlinking than um, either textbooks or up to date. Residents also rank Wikipedia very highly, and they rank it as one of their most visited websites. Here's an example of one of Wikipedia's high quality um, uh, articles. This is the causes section of the article on schizophrenia. And you know, you, you don't need to read it, of course, but what you'll notice, you'll notice that basically every sentence is followed by a blue link. We at Wikipedia, we link more dense, we reference more densely than textbooks or journal articles because we're not able to verify that those who wrote the content are experts themselves, and therefore our content must stand entirely on the references provided. And how are we doing with respect to referencing Wikipedia? This here is a graph of how uh, the number of references supporting Wikipedia's medical content has changed over time. And we've seen that references have more than tripled between 2009 and 2015 um, um, across all languages. 
And if you look at the subsection of references that are journals supporting Wikipedia's medical content, and you look at which journals are most frequently used, reassuringly, the journals that are deemed to be of highest quality by uh, the medical profession are also the most frequent journal sources used to support Wikipedia's medical content. Additionally, Wikipedia has um, a, a, a peer review process, as I mentioned. Um, articles are graded um, by how good they are. And when articles reach the, the highest standards, they end up with either a gold, uh, I mean, a green plus or a gold star in the right upper hand corner. Past good article status, the article needs to be peer reviewed by at least one other independent Wikipedia. And to reach featured article status, the article must be. Uh, peer review by multiple um, other Wikipedians. Um, what we see, you know, for medicine, we have about 64 featured articles in English. We have about 204 good articles in English, which means that less than 1% of medical articles have passed their own internal peer review. That means there's a great deal more work to do to bring Wikipedia's medical content to a consistently high standard, which is why, you know, we need to increase the number of people involved in working on our content. An additional effort that a couple of us have, have taken, we took one, uh, we brought one article through Wikipedia's internal peer review process. We brought it to featured article status in Wikipedia. We then took that article and we submitted it to the journal um, uh, Open Medicine. That article went through Open Medicine's peer review process and was um, uh, published in a PubMed index journal. We have other journals who are interested in uh, doing doing this as well, including the journal Cross Medicine and the journal Epilepsia. And this is an opportunity for uh, Wikipedians to get academic credit for contributing to Wikipedia. Here's the, here's the article that was published. Um, uh, it was on dengue fever by myself, an internal medicine physician from the UK, a virologist from the UK, and a gentleman who was at that point in time at the Center for Disease Control. Um, and interestingly, you know, this article was published a couple of years ago. Um, uh, the, the science on dengue fever has advanced since then. And while the peer reviewed, um, uh, the formal peer reviewed version is static, the Wikipedia version continues to advance. So, one exciting thing with respect to dengue fever is we now have a, an effective vaccine that's, in, that's available in multiple countries around the world that didn't exist at, at that point in time. Another opportunity for, for publishing um, uh, Wikipedia uh, bill names for academic credit is something called the Wiki Journal of Medicine. Uh, this here was started back in 2014 by a, a Swedish Wikipedian and physician. Uh, it's an open access journal. All open access journal on journals is this journal has no associated costs. Um, so you don't need to pay to publish in it. Uh, the journal has just started out. It's hosted on, on the sister site known as Wikiversity. Uh, we're still working to get it PubMed Index. Um, a dozen articles have been published as of uh, today. Now, with respect to level of quality assurance on Wikipedia, uh, when someone makes a change to Wikipedia, it goes through a number of, uh, there's a number of steps of quality assurance that verifies the accuracy of this content. Yeah. Initially, when new changes are made, the first thing to look at that new change are these uh, bots or very smart computer scripts. And this here takes care of more than half of our low-level vandalism. So, you know, if some um, elementary or, or middle school student comes and adds uh, gibberish to Wikipedia, um, uh, bots take care of most of those issues. The second level of quality assurance is something called new change patrol. So new changes to Wikipedia are basically um, are put on this list and a group of volunteers who aren't necessarily a, a, a topic subject matter expert goes through those new changes. Um, um, is okay, no, that is not okay. The third level of quality control is something called the watch list. And what, um, you know, if, if someone's interested in a, in a topic, they put it on their watch list so that they're notified when a new change occurs to that article. Uh, if it's like HIV, AIDS, or pneumonia, you, you see that about 500 to 1,000 people have watch list and are notified when changes are made. Now, more obscure topics, you know, can have, you know, less than 20 people keeping an eye on it. So the reliability of Wikipedia for major topics than it is for uh, obscure topics.
Philadelphia Forty Control are these group of well-respected editors known as administrators. Um, if, you know, everybody can edit Wikipedia initially, but if people make consistently poor quality edits to Wikipedia, they can lose their ability to edit Wikipedia early. They also have the ability to protect um, uh, Wikipedia articles so that only established editors can make changes to them. Two other levels of, of, of quality assurance that we have, uh, we have the ability to block certain links from being added to Wikipedia. So a lot of people, you know, because Wikipedia is so popular, there's a lot of companies out there that try to use Wikipedia to promote themselves or to promote their own company. And we have the ability to simply say, you know, this link isn't valid, and therefore if this URL within the edit window, the save button will not work to determine a conflict of interest. One of the most recent quality assurance measures has been a collaboration with Turnitin. Turnitin is a, a company that has developed software that detects um, copy and paste issues. Uh, it's used by a lot of schools around the world, um, you know, to, and then they run student papers through this. Uh, they run theses through this to make sure that this work hasn't been previously published. Um, one, one of my friends reached out to Turnitin a couple of years back and, um, you know, was sort of chatting with Turnitin about collaborating. And Turnitin says, we love Wikipedia free access to our API. And subsequent to that, we've built a bot that basically sends every edit to English Wikipedia over a certain size. It sends it to um, a Turnitin. Turnitin determines whether or not um, there's a significant degree of, of of copy and pasting within that new edition, and all new edit uh, and, and all the concerns are then flagged, and then human beings go through these concerns um, uh, to fix them. So I'm going to discuss some of the collaborations that we at Wikipedia Project Medicine are working on with with other organizations. So first, one of my favorite collaborations is something known as the Medical Translation Project. Um, it basically involves three steps. We're working to improve articles in English Wikipedia. We're then working to translate these articles into as many other languages as possible. And finally, we're working to get access to this content to as many people as possible. Two, um, uh, two main types of articles. Uh, we initially began by uh, bringing articles on English Wikipedia through the good article or feature article process. Um, uh, these articles were two and a half thousand to ten thousand words in length, and then we were working to translate these entire articles into other languages. And what we quickly realized is that one, it's a huge amount of work to bring an English article to good article or feature article status, and two, this was more content than many of the smaller languages um, um, could maintain, or then they would find useful. So. A couple of years ago, we switched to just improving the, the beginning or the lead of English articles. Basically, we're, we're working to create three to four paragraph overviews of, of important topics. And then we're just encouraging people to translate these first three to four paragraphs into other languages. Uh, we've already we're working on translation, translation in more than 100 languages, and we've already translated more than 5 million words of text. Um, our, our primary partners are translators of borders and rubric. However, um, you know, we're, we're encouraging people from the different language communities of Wikipedia to also join us. This needed. Every day, thousands of people die for lack of health care. And a major factor in why they have a lack of health care is there's simply poor access to uh, health care information, specifically health care information in the own language. Uh, there's a survey done in, in Africa that found that half of people said that a friend or family member could have been saved if they'd had information in their own language. One of the difficulties in many areas of Africa is if you go to um, um, physician, uh, that medical physician often will not speak your language. Um, uh, often they're working through a translator, and thus much is lost. Um, many people will go to witch doctors because which doctors speak their own language, but often do not give the best healthcare advice. Um, and you know, even within my own country, you know, I, I, as I mentioned, I work as an emergency physician. Um, I have mothers who bring in their children in the middle of the night because their child has nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. 
Um, and you know, I asked the mom, you know, how, you know, how's your child drinking? And the mom replies, I haven't given my child anything to drink because every time I do, my child either vomits or they have diarrhea. It goes right through them. And of course, if a child has gastroenteritis or diarrhea, you want to give them more fluid, not less. And if you live in a country where that knowledge is easily acquired, that can, you know, be the difference between life or death. Here are some interesting graphs looking at um, um, the internet by language. If you look at the left upper hand corner there, what you see is that those of us who speak English are incredibly, incredibly lucky of the internet is in your language. Uh, another 30% of the internet is in um, these 10 big European languages. But if you speak languages like Arabic, Hindi, and Bengali, you know, these are languages spoken by uh, um, uh, hundreds of millions, um, if not billions of people. Less than 1% of the internet is in these three languages. Um, yet, if you look at the population of the world, um, you know, English, the English speaking population only makes up 6% of the population, while those who speak Arabic, Hindi, and Bengali make up 12% of the world population. Wikipedia is somewhere between the internet generally and the world by language. Uh, about 20% about of Wikipedia's content is in English. Um, percent of Wikipedia's content is in, is in the other 5,000 languages um, that exist out there. So there's still a great deal of work for us to do on, uh, on Wikipedia as well. One of our successes here back in 2014, um, uh, during the early part of the outbreak, there's a group of us who worked to improve Wikipedia's English's coverage of, of Ebola. Uh, we then worked with our partners to get this content translated into more than 115 other languages. Um, you know, when we knew that our Ebola content was getting extensively read, we didn't know who was reading this content. So I was at a conference um, um, speaking about these sorts of issues, and I met this researcher from Microsoft. And the difficulty we at Wikipedia have is we collect very, very little information about those using Wikipedia. But this gentleman from Microsoft, Bing and Microsoft, of course, collect everything about everyone. Um, and I asked him, I said, you know, what is the most used medical resource for Ebola in the four countries that are most affected during this outbreak, um, and those being Liberia, Sturgeon, Guinea, Guinea, and Ebola. And a couple of days later, he ran the numbers, and he um, his reply was that Wikipedia was the most used in each of the four countries, with the second um, uh, most used website being CNN, followed by the CDC, followed by the World Health Organization. 14, Wikipedia's Ebola content got about 100 million page views. Uh, this story was picked up uh, um, uh, to some extent by uh, the New York Times, which commented on how Wikipedia was becoming a trusted source of Ebola information. <clears throat> so with respect to this, um, um, uh, the first step of this process, the first step is, is improving content. And Basically, you know, we, we're working to write the beginning of the English articles in simple language. We know that this is, you know, we want Wikipedia to be accessible by the general population. Uh, we're adding references to every sentence. We're working on essential medicines. So these are uh, 400, about 410 medicines deemed by the World Health Organization to be most important in a basic healthcare um, um, uh, basic healthcare system. We're working on important human diseases. Uh, we're working on sanitation engineering products, and we're working with a number of uh, schools to, to both improve this content, plus to translate this content into other uh, languages. Writing simple is key. The first, um, um, uh, we're basically breaking down the, 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 the four paragraphs for diseases into the first paragraph covering definitions and symptoms, the second paragraph covering diseases and diagnoses, the third paragraph covering prevention and treatment, the fourth paragraph covering epidemiology and history. Um, all the articles are currently being reviewed by, uh, by me before they're put on the list for translation in other languages. And right now we have more than 700 articles, um, 700 these short articles ready for translation. Here's an example of one of those um, short articles for translation. This is the article on rabies. Uh, rabies uh, kills more than 26,000 people each year, which, to put it in perspective, is more people than have ever died from Ebola. Um, this is also 
uh, completely and entirely preventable through um, vaccination, through uh, post-exposure prophylaxis, and um, uh, through immunization of, of, of dogs. Um, I'll skip over that bit. Uh, this is just a, a brief discussion. Um, uh, this is just a brief discussion of, of how to add a high quality source uh, and the importance of putting stuff in your own words and the importance of, of, of simplifying um, complicated material down to um, uh, a nice brief summary. Translating the content into other languages. Uh, so, as I mentioned, we're working with a number of partners. Um, uh, we initially started with, uh, by working with an organization called Translators Without Borders. Uh, this is an NGO um, that started in 1998. Uh, they basically are um, thousands of volunteer translators that do humanitarian work for other NGOs. Uh, we're using all human translation translators. We're not using machine translation as machine translation just doesn't have a, a high enough quality. One of the exciting things we've seen is that some languages have, have specifically improved um, um, uh, for their target audience. So, for example, uh, you know, we worked to improve the work on HIV, AIDS, and English. It was translated from English into Persian. It was added to the Persian Wikipedia. And then um, uh, the Persian Wikipedia community added a specific section on HIV AIDS in Persia or in, in, in Iran. Um, well, that content wouldn't be so useful for English Wikipedia, it of course was of critical importance for, for Persian Wikipedia. And, and you know, some of the first content to exist on H, uh, about HIV AIDS in, 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 per, uh, in Persian as the government has a position that these sorts of diseases don't really exist. Happily with the National Taiwan University College of Medicine. Um, so they are working to translate uh, these articles from English into Chinese. Um, and uh, the students are doing the translation with a combination of Hackcad and Facebook. And then once the translations are done, they're being verified by their professors uh, before they're then uploaded to, to um, uh, Chinese Wikipedia. Have, um, uh, students from, from that university have found this work to be really useful. Uh, you know, in many areas of the world, medical students are studying in English, and then once they graduate, all of a sudden they need to learn how to communicate with their patients in Chinese. So this is sort of giving them um, uh, the skills they need to do that as they're spending time translating from English into Chinese during medical school, and this will make them better physicians once they get out. We've been very lucky to have some language champions. Uh, this here gentleman here is Suba Shanda Root. He's a retired orthopedic um, uh, surgeon from, from uh, Eastern India. And he has done more than 500 of these translations himself. Um, uh, Aria is spoken by 33 million uh, people. Uh, and this is, you know, if you take these oracles, if you take the names of these oracles in Aria and you pop them into Google, for many of these major topics, this is the first content to ever exist uh, online, Google. So you take, you know, a term like measles vaccine. Yeah, you pop it into you pop it into a Google search, and the only thing that comes up is this article that he has translated. Um, uh, part of the project is a digital last mile. Problem is that those in the developing world they have poor access to computers. They often have poor access. to but there's the silver lining. Cell phones are incredibly widespread everywhere. Six out of seven people globally have um, a cell phone. However, data charges are often expensive. And, and even if you can afford the data, um, the, the, the reliability of the cell phone system is often poor as well. We're working on is working to convince cell phone companies to give Wikipedia access in the developing world without data charges. We're also working on mechanisms to allow people to download all Wikipedia's medical content to their uh, phone's SD card when they do have uh, internet access, so that when they don't have internet access, they still have all that content available at their fingertips. We've been doing well with respect to uh, convincing cell phone companies to give free Wikipedia access. Currently, there are 300 million um, cell phone customers in the countries highlighted in green that currently have free access to, uh, without data charges to Wikipedia. Um, and here's, here's uh, um, our offline apps. Uh, back in June of 2015, uh, we began a partnership with Wikimedia Switzerland, the Swiss chapter of the Wikimedia movement, um, to develop 
um, offline. Uh, currently, the apps are um, one step download for Android. There's two steps to download apps for, for other operating systems. These apps contain all of the Wikipedia's anatomy, medical, pharmacology, and sanitation content. We have currently have apps available in, in um, 10 languages, including English, Chinese, Persian, Arabic, Portuguese, German, Spanish, French, Japanese, and Odia. And we have data files in more languages. These are really big apps. The English app is 1.2 uh, gigabytes. Uh, it's, but it's basically a lot of content. Uh, we're working to update the apps about every six months based on improvements uh, to online Wikipedia. And we've seen more than 100,000 downloads of these apps across these 10 languages. Uh, English, of course, is being loaded with uh, Arabic. Um, we've seen about 10,000 downloads of the, of the Arabic version. We're also working on traveling distribution systems. It's basically um, a device that can be set up in a library such that when people log on to the device, they can download all Wikipedia's medical content from the device uh, onto their phone without either the device or the phone needing to have internet or cellular access. Back to the offline app, the majority of the downloads, about 37% of the downloads we've seen are from India, 9% from Pakistan, 8% from the Philippines, 7% from, from the USA. Um, we're basically seeing this being extensively used by those in the developing world. And this is a population that, that online Wikipedia has struggled to reach. Um, you know, most readers of online Wikipedia are from the developed world, whether this offline format, we're seeing extensively used by those in the developing world. A couple other collaborations. We're working with an organization called Health Phone, we're working with an organization called Osmosis. These are organizations that develop video based content. Um, Osmosis, for example, has made more than 150, 150 overview videos of key healthcare diseases. Um, these videos are on uh, English Wikipedia, and plus there's people working to translate the videos into other languages. We're also working with Health Phone to put Wikipedia content on micro SD cards that they're working in collaboration with the Indian government to send out to um, um, healthcare providers, like community health workers in India, which there are about 2 million. To end, and before, to, and before I open for questions, I just want to emphasize there are many topics more important than Ebola. You know, while Ebola got a great deal of press a couple of years back, there is a wide breadth of healthcare content that people need to have um, uh, high quality access to. Um, so, if you wish to reach out to me, uh, on Wikipedia, I'm known as user.games. There's my email address uh, there. And uh, yeah, come join me and imagine a world where every single person on the planet is given free access to the sum of all human knowledge. Wonderful. Thanks, James. Wonderful. Thanks, James. Um, let's open the... Let's open it up for questions. So, guys, are you are you alive? Are you okay? Do you have any questions for Doc James? Yes. Okay. Guys, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I think he should hear you. James, can you hear us? Yeah, I do. Okay. I, I didn't quite catch that question. Maybe uh, I can hear you, Shannon. You can repeat the question. Yeah, Itama. Okay. Say it again. Yeah. Um, James, I'm asking about uh, as a physician and as a, um, Wikipedia. a, a, a Wikipedia, um what is your opinion about the term Dr. Google? Or uh, people uh, gathering information at Wikipedia uh, and coming to a physician meeting and um, arguing with the doctor? Um, so, um, uh, my opinion of Dr. Google, um, um, so Google, of course, is a search engine rather than an information provider. Um, so typically when people Google stuff, uh, they are directed to an information resource uh, from that point. And of course, Google frequently directs people to Wikipedia as a source of healthcare information, as well as you know, to the National Institute of Health or Mayo Clinic, etc. Um, with respect to uh, having educated patients, 
Uh, I believe strongly in shared decision making. And you know, for shared decision making to function, you need to have both the, the, the physician and the patient coming from the same evidence base. Um, so, uh, you know, in my opinion, I really like having well-educated patients. Um, and, you know, for, for as an emergency physician, you know, I see, I have mothers bring in children with rare genetic conditions, sometimes rare genetic conditions that, you know, I haven't heard about since, since medical school because, you know, they occur in one in a million, one in five million children. And that mother knows more about her child's condition than I do. Um, and I don't think there's anything to be ashamed about that. You know, I ask mothers, you know, um, you know, when you brought your child in with this last time, what, what did they do for you? What, what did they recommend? Um, because, you know, the mother is the expert in that situation. You know, I have the ability to prescribe the medication, you know, and I, of course, double check, you know, her, her position. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, don't think, I see nothing wrong with, um, with, with, with well educated patients. Did you get an answer? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, no, um, James, she's going to ask in Hebrew and I'm going to translate. Oh, okay. okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So, we know that Wikipedia is making doctors and students' life more easy. But doesn't, it, doesn't this easy way of processing information throw out the line of censorship? For example, a weak person who has some severe condition with a high death rate might click twice on the mouse and figure out that he has not much more time to live. Or a child whose mother might suffer from cancer can easily figure out the death rate of this illness. So, doesn't it make information too easily accessible for people who might misinterpret it? James, did you get that? Um. <laughs> Can you, can you repeat that a little bit closer to the... To the sure. sure, sure, sure. So what Maria basically asks is, um, isn't the internet... She's, uh, first of all, continuing um, uh, the previous question and wants to know if the fact that we can um, so easily search for information online, um, is it, does it make information a bit too accessible for people to misinterpret? Um, right? Did I get the gist of it? Um, she's saying, well, children can look for information and find out or interpret wrongly um, information, medical information, and that's a bit, if I understand where you're coming from, a bit dangerous. So what can you say about that? Um, you know, we at Wikipedia, we're working to provide high quality health information. You know, if we weren't here, that wouldn't mean that all the low quality health information out on the internet would disappear. So, um, you know, there's a lot of bad healthcare information online. Um, and, and, you know, in my opinion, it's better for us to provide high quality information that's at lower risk of being misinterpreted rather than providing no information and then leaving feel to those who are purposely um, trying to provide poor information. So, you know, we see a lot of pharmaceutical websites. We see a lot of, um, you know, and there's a lot of pharmaceutical websites that, that purposely try to mislead people about um, uh, health care so that they can then make more money off of them. Um, we, you know, in my opinion, it's important to have independent healthcare information um, um, to combat all the not independent healthcare information um, uh, that's already online. If, if risk, can, if is can, there a risk that people who come to Wikipedia misinterpret what we write and it could result in harm? Yeah, there's a small risk, but in my opinion, the benefit is much greater than the risk. Okay. Um, and if to expand on what uh, James is saying, the internet is out there, it's not going to change soon. Um, information is accessible and many of, much of the information, well he said it very gently, I will be less gentle, but pharmaceutical companies for instance, um, many organizations that, or uh, companies that have an agenda um, push information to users 
and that information might not be the most accurate. So what James is saying, we'd rather make sure that some information is available in, in a, that is, yeah, pr that is not only high quality, but that we know uh, there's no real agenda behind it. So it's, it's better to, to do something to, to make sure rather than say, okay, the internet is, is, is not okay. And I will also say it's also about educating people how to, to use information, which is part of what we try to do in the course anyway. Um, so just making people aware of how to evaluate what, what in, the information that they see online. It's not just about medical content. It's a much wider um, phenomena that we have to, um, to work around. And um, it's interesting that that's the first thing that you ask, because obviously, uh, I mean, later on in your career, you're going to find patients in your clinics, in, in the hospital, um, in Kupat <laughs> Cholim, that, that know stuff, that search stuff, and you'll have to deal with it. So, yeah, you know, what one of the big examples, uh, I don't know how prominent it is in, it is in Israel, but there's, there's a strong anti-vaccine movement. Um, and the anti-vaccine movement, you know, is, is, they publish a lot of websites, um, um, you know, they provide a lot of false information. Um, and, you know, we at Wikipedia, we sort of try to refute that, you know. Um, we refute the statements by the, the anti-vaccine movement. Um, and so, so, so that they're not the only ones who have a strong presence um, uh, on Google. So it's about balancing out some of what's happening online and just making sure it's, yeah, more balanced, I would say. Questions? More questions, guys? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's a good question. So um, the student is asking, um, well, you, you described many initiatives around the world. Um, is there an organization who's, who's doing the work eventually? How does it work? Can you tell us about the process a bit of uh, the foundation and what it's doing? Yeah, so, so um, we, we formed a charity known as Wiki Project Med Foundation that, that uh, basically is, is sort of a go-between between the, the, the online Wikipedia community of editors and outside organizations that are interested in, in collaborating with Wikipedia, who, you know, who share our goals and are interested in working with us. And this, this um, NGO, um, it's based out of, it's based out of uh, New York State, but it has members from, from, from you know, around the world. Um, and, you know, yeah, you know, it, it basically works on, on these collaborations. Wikipedia is sort of a duocracy. Um, you know, it's interesting because you don't need to be pre-approved to, to get involved. You can, you know, just jump in with both feet and, and um, you know, simply using common sense. Uh, you know, and then, you know, with respect to, to more official collaborations, Wiki Project Med Foundation runs a bunch of those. And for, for some, if to expand on what James is saying, for some, in some cases, we might have what we call a Wikipedian in residence. So the, the organization might hire for a certain amount of time a Wikipedian to make the, the information from that organization more accessible. Um, and that work is a paid work, but very little. It's like a more of a, you know, it's not like you'll be a millionaire from, or it's, it's a, a compensation of sorts for your time and effort, but most of the work is done by volunteers. And that's the, the big answer. We have the organization, but most of the work is done by volunteers. Any other questions? This is an opportunity, don't miss it. You can ask anything, really. You're not curious about anything else. So James, I'm going to ask on behalf of my students who are a bit shy today, um, can you tell them a bit about how you balance your life as a physician and your life as um, an emergency uh, 
an emergency doctor? Uh, that's a question that usually rises up in, in, the, <laughs> in the sessions you give, so you might as well tell them a bit about that. Sure. So, so um, as I mentioned, I became involved with Wikipedia about um, uh, about ten years ago. Um, in the last two years, I have decreased the amount of uh, clinical work I do. I'm, I'm currently working about half time at an emergency physician, and then I spend half um, uh, uh, working on Wikipedia's medical content. So, um, yeah, you know, here in Canada, physicians are well remunerated. Um, as an emergency physician. Uh, I work shift work, which means that, you know, when I'm in the hospital, I'm typically uh, busy seeing patients, but then as an emergency physician at the end of your day, you, you, you sign over all your patients to the next physician coming on, and you don't have ongoing um, clinical work. And also with respect to, you know, the structure of emergency medicine in Canada, um, you know, the way we're remunerated, we're basically remunerated by the hour for covering the emergency department. Um, and basically, the more hours you work, the more you get paid. But you know, there's uh, you know, there's more in life than, than just making money. Um, you know, some people, some of my colleagues, head off to work with organizations like Medicine Sans Frontier, uh, Doctors Without Borders. I've decided, you know, for for my uh, uh, for my contribute, contribution to humanity, I would uh, uh, work on Wikipedia. Any other questions? So I'm curious, um, James, what do you think um, first-year students can do? I mean, can they do anything? This, this, these students um, in, in the Wikimed course are first-year students in a program of about seven years, to say the least. So they're really just starting out. What can they do and can they make an impact? Yeah, you know, some of our greatest contributors to Wikipedia have started um, well medical students or have started well in residency programs. For example, our dermatology coverage is, uh, um, so our coverage of skin diseases is really good because we had a gentleman who was doing his fellowship in dermatology who basically spent a huge amount of time during that one, two years of his program um, improving the cover coverage of skin diseases on Wikipedia. Uh, and then now that he's out in practice, uh, we don't see him much anymore because, you know, real life is, has, has gotten in the way. But um, for many people, uh, becoming involved as a student is when, you know, it's, it's a great way for you to learn the material yourselves. Um, um, yeah, you know, and, and even, you know, as a physician, I believe Wikipedia has made me a better physician. Uh, you know, often you go to medical school, you're told all these things um, by your professors. Some of them simply aren't true. Um, um, and then, you know, when you look, but you, when you look at the evidence behind uh, the practice, there are many surprises that you encounter. You know, you still might do stuff, um, even though the evidence is not there. But it's always good to know, you know, am I doing this because it's well supported by evidence? Or am I doing this just because it makes common sense? And there really isn't any evidence to support us doing that. So, um, uh, I think editing Wikipedia is a great way to learn. I think uh, last question. Unless, I, unless anyone else has a question. Else. No? So the last thing I think um, would be beneficial for students to hear from you maybe is how do you find your work as a Wikipedian helps, if at all, and when you work as a doctor? So um, I've actually had patients print out articles I've written and bring them in to talk to me about um, the condition in question. And the patients have no idea that I wrote the article. So, you know, it's sort of an opportunity to, you know, engage with your patient even before they see you. Um, yeah, you know, and, and I also use articles that I've written as, as handouts for patients. So, you know, a patient comes in with gout, let's say, and I will print out the Wikipedia article on gout uh, because I know it's accurate and because I've been involved with writing it. And I'll give them this material um, about gout, which will, you know, go through all the lifestyle changes that are important, will go through all the treatment uh, recommendations. Um, so, you know, I've sort of developed a bunch of patient handouts uh, to, to give to people through my work with Wikipedia. That's very cool, I think. 
especially the ability to say to your patient, hey, I wrote that article, so I know what I'm talking about. That's really helpful. Um, I think at this point, guys, anyone else wants to, to ask anything? So if not, we're going to thank you so much for waking up so early to talk to us and for doing it year after year. And, uh, yes, no worries. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, I've got a question, a question for students. Yeah. What, what language do you use Wikipedia in? What language of Wikipedia do you use? Do you read the material in Hebrew? Hebrew? So the default would be Hebrew, but if not, then in English or Arabic or, right? The, the other, whatever the, I think the mother tongue is, that would be the default. And if that's not working, then English, right? Is that correct for everyone? Some go to English right away because they know that the uh, wiki articles in their language is not good enough. So that might also be the case. Any, anything else you want to ask the, the students? Have you guys been do, so you guys have been doing some translation from, from, from English into Hebrew? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> some of it from the uh, wiki translation project. Some of it, this semester, we did a special thing that we edited um, uh, articles related to women health. So um, each student by now wrote two, two articles. One was related to, to, to women health and the second, whatever they wanted. And uh, they could choose from requested articles in Hebrew or your, um, your list. And um, some chose from the list, I think, right? Some of, the, some of you did. And even not, even if it's not from the list, they usually check for, they check what's happening on, on English wiki and translate through, through that. So that's usually okay. part of the process, at least as a baseline. Okay. Have, have you been, have you been using the content translation tool? Oh yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Many of them. It's not perfect, but it's better than anything else so far. So yeah. It takes care of some of the technical back end of things. Yeah. Anything else, guys, or James, that you want to know? Um, and, and, you know, what, what do you guys find useful about Wikipedia? And, you know, how, how do you think Wikipedia can be made better for, for medical students? They're discussing. <laughs> Give them a minute. <laughs> oh, interesting. A student is now um, offering that if we can somehow get a log of all the Google searches of what people are actually looking for, like, like the articles that are most searched, and then devise a list to, to make sure that these articles are being written and are in high quality. That's actually a good, a good, uh, a good idea. Right. So if we, we can maybe ask Google for help in that and making sure that we somehow separate the regular searches from medical content searches, which I'm sure they have a way of doing. They're Google. Um, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, unless it, it already exists. So, 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 so you mean which are the articles people are looking for in Hebrew that don't, uh, about medicine, that don't yet exist in Hebrew? Not only in Hebrew, in any language. In any language, basically, but yes. In any language, yeah. You know, one, one thing we do have is, you know, we do have a list of uh, uh, the top most, the top 5,000 most read English medical articles, and it comes out each week. Um, and then, you know, one could go through that list and see, you know, which of these top 5,000 articles 
is there a corresponding oracle in Hebrew that's missing? Well, we need to create a query for that, right? We don't have anything ready for that. Uh, it, it, it'd be fairly easy to do it. Yeah. It'd be fairly easy to pull through that. Yeah, we can devise something like that. We can take the, the 5,000 um, most article, most read articles in English and then check what's not available in Hebrew. But but I guess there are going to be some discrepancies in in terms of what is most searched in one country is not in, a, in, one, in, in a specific language does not necessarily mean that's going to be search in English, right? So that's why... True. <laughs> there's, there's some correlation, but it's not a perfect correlation. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. So uh, can, can we actually, know. can we reach out to Google and ask them to get the list of languages? Um, so so I can get it from, from um, internally. Uh, so we have a couple of tools that we've done right now. Perfect. Cool. So, so we'll do it and send the link to the, to the students. Yeah. That would be nice. Perfect. And, and so, so, so you want to listen to Hebrew and Arabic or just Hebrew? I think Hebrew, Arabic. I mean, if we can have like um, um, a query set up, just like the, the one for the 100 um, articles list that you can tweak the language, that would be amazing. Yeah, because, you know, right now what I'm doing is, is uh, I'm basically going through this list of the top 5,000 most read medical articles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm working to improve um, uh, the leads of, of, you know, the highest ones up. So right now we have a tool that will take these 700 articles and it will, it will see whether or not any of these 700 articles are missing in Hebrew. So, so we already have that tool. Have, have you shared that with students? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is the tool we are now using to, to know which articles are missing from, from Hebrew. So we are already using yeah. this, but... What, what the student is now suggesting is something a bit, a bit different, is not querying Wikipedia, but querying Google. So check what, yeah. what, what is most searched on Google, and then somehow yeah. check if, if it exists or not. Yeah, um, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if Google would be willing to share that information. Uh, <laughs> like, like, like any for-profit company, uh, you know, they, they keep their proprietary um, uh, information pretty close. Um, yeah, so... Well, we can, we can try, though, yeah. right? Hmm? We, we can try just to see what's missing. Yeah. Okay, we'll think about that, definitely. We'll try to reach out to Google. We have some friends. <laughs> No, no, I'm talking about... Sorry, I'm going to switch to Hebrew for a second. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about... I'm... I'm talking about... I'm talking about... I'm talking about... I'm talking about Google and to get from them data on the things that are looking for them and they don't have them in the Wikipedia in English and they can come in English. So it's a little bit tricky, but I think it's possible. ולדעתי, אם יהיה שיתוף פעולה רשמי כזה, כלומר, זה לא שהם יחשפו את הרשימות האלה, אבל כן נוכל לקבל מושג, זה אפשרי. יש כאן עוד הצעות למה שהוא שאל? למה, מה יכול לעזור לחיים שלכם להיות קלים יותר כסטודנטים לרפואה? I mean, not search the name of the sickness or I don't know what. Maybe write a symptom and then see a list of, of things it could be. Hmm. So or, Wikidata is going to help do that. The more we actually um, write. Do you want to say something about Wikidata? Um, I, you know, yeah, yeah, her, her question was about, you know, different diagnoses. Um, and, you know, Wikipedia improving its coverage of different diagnoses. Yeah, you know, I agree. You know, we have articles on each symptom, and then, you know, we list, you know, we list the, 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 the most common causes. So, for example, if you go to Wikipedia and you look at the article on, um, on nausea, for example, it will run through, 
you know, uh, it will run through the most common causes, you know, gastrointestinal, food poisoning, medications, pregnancy, uh, disequilibrium, um, um, and then it breaks it down by the potentially serious. So we're doing that to some degree, but, you know, doing that to a bigger extent um, would be useful. Yeah, I agree. And, and we can do it um, by improving or making sure that the Wikidata items are basically covered, like mapping all the symptoms for all the disease, the known diseases, which is a huge project but can be done. It's, it's a limited <laughs> project in its size. And once we have everything on Wikidata, you can query it, right? So, and, then, and then, you know, you know, identifying, you know, you break up the different causes of specific symptoms. So, you know, the causes of nausea, there are, there's thousands of different causes of nausea. Um, you know, having, having a raw list of every possible cause of nausea. Um, um, one, you know, also needs to break down the causes by which are the most, more common and then which are the more serious. Um, uh, yeah, so you know, it, it's a uh, it's important work, but yeah, it, it takes a fair bit of thought to uh, to yeah, how to devise it properly. Yeah, Definitely. I agree. Anything else? Any other ideas that you have? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. The, the student is asking, in terms of references, uh, most of the work of the articles that are written are based on academic research, right? So what happens when that research changes? Um, can we devise some kind of bot that will continue to check, um, I don't know, Google Scholar, and see if there are any continuations of um, research topics in researching specific topics so, and this bot will notify the person who wrote the article so they can you know update the material yeah so these are yeah, some yeah. of the so, ideas so what we have right now is, um you know with respect to you know the type of source called a cochrane systematic review Cochrane is basically an organization of about 25,000 academics, and they write a specific type of article that reviews all the available high quality research on, on a specific question. And basically, they come up with a systematic review, and every you know two to seven years or so, they will update that systematic review. They've built a bot that basically looks through all the Cochrane systematic reviews that Wikipedia is using, and it flags reviews when a new systematic review comes out, saying that, um, uh, you know, there's a new review available um, and that someone then needs to come and, you know, see if the new review says the same thing as the old review and just update the reference in question, or if the um, uh, new review says something different and then update the text and update um, uh, the reference in question. So, you know, right now we have a number of volunteers working on that project, and we're, of course, always interested in more people who are interested in, in, in updating our coverage of Cochrane Reviews. So, so you're saying it exists in English? It exists in English, yes. And what but would... Just for Cochrane Review. For Conference Review. James, for conference review? What was that? For Skip conference? There. Just for conferences? No, just for Cochrane reviews. We can't hear you well. So, Can you repeat? It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just for Cochrane, Cochrane reviews. Can you type uh, it? <laughs> We, we can't yeah, get yeah, the yeah. word you're saying. So if you click on this link. The Cochrane. It's Cochrane. Um, you know called the Cochrane Collaboration. Oh, the, the one where Sydney was Wikipedian in residence? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Oh, so the organization okay. where Sydney was Wikipedian in residence. Okay. 
זה, זה ארגון, אני אשלח לכם לינק, אבל זה ארגון שבאמת מאגד כל מיני מחקרים שנעשו על, ואז אפשר באמת לבדוק את המקום הזה, זה, זה ארגון שזה מה שהוא עושה. אז, שנעשו על משהו ספציפי, וכאילו כל כמה שנים מעדכן את הדברים הכי חדשים שנעשו בתחום הזה. עובדת איתם. נכון. יש לנו ויקיפדית שהייתה ממש שם בארגון הזה כדי לעזור להעביר את המידע שיש שם לתוך ויקיפדיה, אבל בגדול אפשר לעשות את זה. זה פשוט דורש הרבה עבודה של מתנדבים. זה קורה כבר באנגלית, אצלנו זה לא קורה, אבל גם ככה אנחנו שואבים את רוב ה... קלטתם את ההבדל מבחינת מספרים, נכון? 35, מעל 35 אלף ערכים ב... אנגלית, אצלנו 2,700. יש לנו מלא עבודה, מלא. כאילו, אתם קלטתם שעד הקורס הזה בכלל לא הייתה לנו קטגוריה של רפואת נשים. אז... כן, יש המון, כאילו, דברים באנגלית שהם... כאילו, אנשים לא מחפשים את זה. אז מסתבר שמחפשים. כלומר, זה נכון שלא כל ה-35,000 הם הכי נקראים, אבל מחפשים, אנשים מחפשים כל מיני דברים. גם בביולוגיה, גם בפרמקולוגיה, בגנטיקה, יש המון המון סוגים שונים של, של ערכים שצריך, כולל ערכים אפילו על מידע סניטרי, שבעולם השלישי והמתפתח זה מאוד מאוד נפוץ. אז כן, יש צורך. ואפילו אם יש בן אדם אחד שמחפש משהו, כן, גם אם זה לא המחלה הכי נפוצה, אנחנו רוצים שיהיה כיסוי, כי מישהו יחפש שיהיה לו פרטים מדויקים ונכונים. אוקיי, אני חושב שעל זה אופטימיסטי נוט, אחרי שאתה שמעת את זה בלאברינג בהיברו. תודה רבה עוד פעם שאתם עושים את זה עם אנשים, ועם אנשים עם הסטודנט. אנחנו רוצים שתהיה לכם פאורפוינט, נכון? אתם יכולים לשלוח את זה למי שאני יכולה לשלוח את זה לסטודנט. יפה. פרפקט. ואתם יכולים להתחיל לשלוח את דוק ג'יימס, אם יש לכם עוד שאלות. ואתם יכולים להתחיל לשלוח. Please. <laughs> Great. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs>